Welcome to our Shepherd's Chapel Bible Study. It's so great that you could all join us. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of today. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. Father, this, this past year has been something. It's, it's been wild. Uh, it's been crazy. It's been blessing. It, it's been all the above. But uh, you are in control. And But it appears that uh, due to the lack of participation in people, that uh, many of them are out of control at this point because they're not putting you first. Uh, normally we would have our prayer time of uh, all the peoples, but we're going to have our Holy Communion at the end of a, our uh, study today, and we will bring it before you at, this, at that time. But Father, I pray that you bless this meeting. Anoint us with thy knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, for we give you all glory, honor, and praise. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, today we're doing a little differently. We're taking a break from our normal studies. And um, this being, uh, of course, I'll be dating this lecture, but this being uh, January 1st of 2023. And I pray that you all had a wonderful and uh, blessed New Year and uh, that you prayerfully brought it in instead of doing what a lot of people seem to be doing these days and drinking it in. But um, and there's nothing wrong with drinking, but in excess, there's a problem with it. So today, we're, I, I was led to discuss about prophecy, <coughs> Bible prophecy of what's taken place this past year, 2022, and then bring it into 2023 of what we have to look forward to. And um, I thought it was very interesting when I started doing this research um, of digging out information. And believe me, I had to do a lot of digging to get accurate information. There's a lot of people out there today, right now, as we'll see as biblical, that... Um, have a lot of information and uh, what they believe to be the gospel or what they believe to be the truth or whatever their philosophy is and prophecies. But um, in many cases, and we'll see why here in a few moments, they're wrong. And the reason they're wrong is because, quite frankly, they have no wisdom. And I'm not calling anybody stupid. I'm just saying, uh, like uh, we were watching Murray last night, and he was talking about the word foolish. And you take that word foolish as it's written in the manuscript, or in the Bible, and you take it back to the manuscript, that means moron. You know? And, um, and no, we shouldn't be going around calling people moron. But the, the, the problem is, is that unless you are biblically versed in understanding with proper wisdom from your father, you're not going to get all this. You're just not going to understand what's happening, why it's happening, and what's coming next. And that's what's so such a blessing about it all when you truly do honor your father, um, is that he provides for you that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So with that being said, I want to uh, bring to you, I've got a lot of stuff written down, and I wrote it down because I can't memorize uh, uh, as well as I used to. I was talking about that about Becca a few moments ago. Um, my short-term memory seems to be out the window these days. but um, So I write a lot of things down so I can cover it properly. Now this isn't going to be in... Um, chronological order. It's going to jump around a little bit, but it's all going to be, for the most part, of 2022 and then eventually into 2023. Uh, to start off with, and this is about Israel. We, uh, the reason I wasn't led to talk a lot of things about this country is because, number one, I couldn't get accurate information, uh, and number two, it's all over the place. And three, we live here. And here in Israel, 
We're hardly getting any information at all anymore. But we're supposed to look to Israel for the... We're supposed to look to mm -hmm. the east. Yes. Why? Because that's where it's all going to go down. Mm -hmm. It's going to go down there first before it takes over the whole world. So yes, we are to focus <coughs> on that. So what took place just recently on December 29th is that uh, BB, you know who BB is? <laughs> Netanyahu, Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, was sworn in again as prime minister. Right. And at first I was asking, well, how did that come to be? <laughs> well, I had to do some digging. And, and it turns out that um, there was a reason for that. Well, yeah. um, but before we get to that, I want to go to uh, last March, March 15th, actually. Yeah. Uh, on March 15th, I don't know if you heard about this. You probably didn't. The eyes of March. Iran launched at least 12 ballistic missiles at Iraqi Kurdistan, the city of Erbil, which is the capital. Hmm. And the rockets fell. When they fell, it fell very close to the uh, uh, American consulate, mm -hmm. the embassy right. there. And... Now, why did they do that? Well, they had their reasons. And their reason was that Iran accused Israel of having spy equipment there. Okay. And that Hezbollah is accusing Israel of using this area to spy on Iran. I hope they are. So by doing that, um, well, I'm not going to say yay or nay. I'm just going to say what, what the facts show. Yeah. Um, I'd be keeping an eye on those guys. Well, they are. Good. But there's more to it than that. It is believed that Ezekiel's war mm -hmm. of uh, Gog and Magog, yep. we've all heard of that, yep. is starting to take shape. It is. And it's really started it by Russia's current aggression. In Russia's alliance with China. Yeah. In Iran. Yeah. Let me let me let me finish. Let's stick with the biblical part of it. Yeah. Okay. Now, who are some of the nations that you brought up? Who are some of the nations that will take part in the end time battle? Well, first you have to do really some detective work because what you got to do, you've got to go back to the ancient manuscripts and get the word, mm -hmm. the the town or the area, right. and then bring it into today's what we call a particular country. Yeah. And there's three of them in particular. Yep. Um, Magog today is currently Russia of today. Now Persia is listed mm -hmm. and Persia back then is today's Iran. Yes, sir. And then Gomer of the ancient language is today's Turkey. So you've got Russia, Iran, and Turkey. That's why there's a lot, hardly anything being talked about Turkey. Have you noticed that? Yes. Every once in a while. Yeah. But let me tell you something. They're right in the middle of the mix. Yeah. And uh, currently, this was interesting. It is the first time in 2,600 years that Russia, Iran, and Turkey is occupying Syria. Huh. First time. It's never happened before. But it did 2,600 years ago? No. Oh. It hasn't happened in 2,600 years. Since, never since this Since Syria. Since this came to be. I got and this will be the primary invasion group mm -hmm. coming to Israel from the north. Why? Right through Syria. Syria's north of Israel. Exactly. So why are they congregating there? God does. Now, Ezekiel uh, 36 and 37 foretells prophecy. And what I'm going to give you, I'm going to just give you five things that's happened this past year. Hmm. Um, and, and previous years leading up to that. Number one, it said Israel must be reborn as a nation. Well, when did that happen? 1948. 1948. So what was the date? Wasn't it May the, May May the 15th? 15th uh -huh. 1948. Yeah. So check. 
Yep. Number two, Jews coming back to Israel and resettling. That's yep. what they've been doing. Yep. Check. Number three, Jews have to rebuild ancient ruins. And that's exactly what they've been doing. Check. As a matter of fact, this past week, it was very interesting. Uh, in Bethsaida, they had Bethsaida location incorrect. And they were digging, looking for ancient ruins and this and that and the other. And they kept coming up against a stone wall. Well, these other two guys, I can't remember their names, but they found what they believed to be the actual location of Bethsaida. And they've been um, digging there, and they found a what's how do you pronounce Byzantine Byzantine mm -hmm. church mm -hmm. um, that technically they've been digging below it, and they found the home of Simon Peter Andrew and Philip. So there's a lot of things taking place in ancient ruins that are coming into being. So to for some people, they need that. They need that extra archaeological find so that they can have faith. God's elect do not. God's elect are chosen by God, gifted of God, and believe God. Period. You know, doesn't mean that they don't fail at times, but uh, when they do, they repent and they get back and do what's right. All right, number four. Also, modern Israel has to be prosperous. Check. They are very prosperous right now. Uh, contrary to what people try to make them out to be. You ever see these things on... Um, I, maybe I shouldn't bring that up. I'm not going to bring that up. Mm -hmm. Number five. <laughs> this was interesting. Well, before I bring this out, in 2018... A red heifer was born right. in Israel. Yeah. But the problem I'm having with that, I can't find anything at all to do with what happened to it. Oh. Now, I do know this, that for those of you that don't understand uh, the big deal of a red heifer, for them, uh, a red heifer must be uh, without spot and blemish, mm -hmm. three years old, mm -hmm. and um, it would be sacrificed and the blood sprinkled and the ashes placed on priests to dedicate them, to sanctify them, to cleanse them. And it had to be a red heifer. Um, and that's biblical. That's in Numbers 19.2. But, of course, God's elect, we don't need any kind of sacrifice whatsoever. Now, with that being said... Well, we already have one. With that being said, do I? Christ was our sacrifice. Yeah. Yes. That's why. Please. But um, <coughs> that red heifer of 2018, the, the, the only thing I could find out is that if even one black hair in anywhere of the body would show up, right. it couldn't be undefiled. Right. So I'm thinking, and I'm, this is just me guessing, I have no idea because I couldn't find it. Right. Something happened to that 2018 red heifer. Yeah. Because I can't find anything where it is or what's happening. Now what I can find out is what just happened. Uh, and it came from Texas. Yes. Five red heifers. Yes. And they are without spot whatsoever. Right now they are in a pen... You wouldn't believe the fanfare these things got when they got landed in Israel. Because um, a, uh, I won't call him a Jew, but I will call him one that knows the Jewish ways mm -hmm. of this farm in Texas, yeah. contacted Israel to tell them that yeah. they had five red heifers and they wanted to give them to Israel. Yeah. Isn't five the number of grace? Yes. But um, they're waiting to do for for three years to pass, or them to be three years old, That's right. and make sure that they're without spot, no black hairs, and all that. 
to sacrifice. Then they will sacrifice them and spread the ashes on their priests. That's supposed to be revamping the temple of God. Now what's wrong with that picture? Revamping the temple. Rebuilding the temple. Everybody talks about the temple rebuilding, the right. temple rebuilding. What does God's elect know about the temple of God? We are the temple. We are the temple of God. When <clears throat> Jesus Christ told his disciples, I will destroy this temple and rebuild it in three days. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what he meant. Yeah. Because he came back in three days, did he not? Yep. And that temple, he, he showed us, and in Scripture, that we are the temple. Right. So, to burn sacrifices now to a priest, to, to operate a temple, is really blasphemy, in my opinion. You know, they're, they're causing themselves to really get into deep stuff with yeah. our Father. That's so weird that we're talking about this, because I was talking about this with Ross on the way in. Mm -hmm. I've been stuck. In this, in the Exodus and Leviticus and all the building of the ark and the, all the temples, all the sacrifices and, and all the rules surrounding it. And I said, finally, I looked at Russ and I said, "You know, what I got out of that is that that used to be the way we had to approach God, but yes. since He sent Jesus, we don't have to do all that That's anymore." Right, He's our intercessor. Right, and and I said to him, I said, so. Beyond the breath of God being so important and such a life thing, the blood to God is really very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not That's the what I got out of this. No, it's mm -hmm. true. Yep. So, about those red heifers now, except for that 2018 one, right. as far as we know, as far as I could find in any history, for the past 2,000 years, no red heifer has been born hmm. until now. Without whatever. And uh, we were talking about the temple of, of God, we being the temple. You can find that if you need to research it. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verses 19 through 20, tells us that God's chosen are the temple of God. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. We don't need to go to Jerusalem to get a temple. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why it's important that you take care of your body, your mind, your heart. Because if, if we're the temple, God <laughs> dwells there. What is God seeing? <clears throat> what is God hearing? You know, and he wants for us to mimic Christ. We can never be Christ, but he wants us to learn his ways and then do what we can to achieve that. Now, everybody here can contest to living without God and what it was like, and living with God and what it is like today. And there is a big difference. We are, as it is written, a new creation. But God is the one that called us. See, a lot of people say, well, this is what I did. You know, no. No, God called you first. No, you can deny that all you want, but that's exactly what he did. He mm -hmm. called you to him. He wants you to be a part of his life and vice versa. All right, continuing on. Now, now we're uh, in April of last year. Putin, we all know Putin. Mm -hmm. Putin demanded Israel. This was funny, but it almost happened. Putin demanded Israel to hand over a Jerusalem church called the Alexander Ninsky Church. Hmm. And Israel actually agreed to do this about two years ago hmm. when Netanyahu was still that prime minister. And he agreed to do it, to hand it over to Russia but what happened, the um, Israeli courts struck it down. They said, there's no way this is going to happen. Huh. Uh, now, why do I bring this up? Because this just might be the next flashpoint erupting in violence in 2023 hmm. in that location. Hmm. You know, just, just, just food for thought. 
Uh, now, this past November, Israel, which normally when Israel does airstrikes or any kind of uh, governmental uh, attacks of any kind, they keep quiet. Mm -hmm. They they won't even even if you know Israel did it, they won't say we did it. You know, but this particular case, Israel confirmed of airstrikes on Iran weapons convoy. Yeah. They had this long convoy going and it was interesting because they not all the convoy was loaded with weapons. Weren't they going to Syria in that They were convoy? going directly to Syria yeah. and <clears throat> they bombed these specific uh, things to to uh, keep the weapons out. Mm -hmm. Also another thing that Israel had, well I'll get to that in a moment. Now, last June, this was very interesting. Israel government defections brought Israel to the brink of collapse. Mm. I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was a guy by the name of Prime Minister Bennett, mm -hmm. who was just basically uh, an interim thing. It, it wasn't. It wasn't voted in. He was placed there until uh, Lapib was supposed to come in and take over his as Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. Well, Bennett was Prime Minister almost a full year than Lapib was to take over and it was when Lapib and Bennett stated they were no longer going to run Israel. And at that point, at that day, the Israel government collapsed mm -hmm. and nobody knew about it. Mm -hmm. it actually collapsed. Mm -hmm. Hence, BB comes into the picture. Hmm. Netanyahu. That's why they voted him in, and before they even voted him in, he was basically um, put in a position to where he was going to take care of business. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't know that they had gotten to the point of almost a collapse. Hmm. Now, going back all the way to February of last year. Russia slams Israel control of the Golan Heights as it started its war against Ukraine. You got to understand, Russia, besides Iran and Turkey, are all in Syria. Now, Israel has been attacking a lot in Syria. You say, well, wait a minute now, why isn't Russia just just going crazy on this because they're just folding their hands and they're watching what's going on. They know very well that um, they're not even pulling troops out of Syria to go to Ukraine. They want them there for a reason. What do you think that reason is? <laughs> you know. So let's not forget Russia entered Syria in 2015, aligning itself with Hezbollah who Syria uses as its attacks with Israel. Mm -hmm. Hezbollah is the ones that go out there and do the actual committing of the, what I call crimes. Now, another thing, last September, Iranian general, I can't remember his name, announces that uh, a new Iranian drone, it's called the Arash-2, mm -hmm was developed for one reason and one reason only mm -hmm. to target it was a long-range missile to target Tel Aviv and Haffa to reach them easily mm -hmm. and this general stated that these long-range suicide drones they were called mm -hmm. uh, were made specifically to attack Tel Aviv and Haffa mm -hmm. now thanks to our father Israel is prepared with its own Iron Dome defense. You've all heard the Iron mm -hmm. Dome mm -hmm. missile defense system. They are also developing, as we well, it's already developed. Mm -hmm. I don't know about mass production, but laser beam technology. Mm -hmm. I saw this thing work once, mm -hmm. not physically, but on the internet, and. Um, this thing, it, it looks like a big cannon, but it shoots out this ray. And it's a, it's a laser beam to 
basically kill anything in the sky. Millions of volts. Anything in the sky. I worked on the prototype in the 80s. Well, Did that, you? That was what we were working on. Well, that, that was... It became their Iron Dome. After I, I'm just wondering what we got. Because I know we've talked about it for quite some time. <coughs> but it's pretty hush-hush, I guess. Yeah, yeah. We'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Now, although Russia has kept silent of Israel's defenses against Syria and Iran, this year, in 2023, I think that might change. I think it's all going to come come together because it's it's all leading to it mm -hmm. you know now we talked briefly before the camera came on about Euphrates Euphrates drying up well it is and uh, the scientists of the region and that's Iran Turkey um, all of it Iraq Iraq all the scientists agree on one thing, that the Euphrates and the Tigris will be completely dried up by 2024. Yeah. Gone. Really? That's dams, everything. Uh, everything that they got is going to be gone. Uh, of course, if the conditions continue. Now, here lies, here lies the key with what all I'm saying is the conditions. Why are these things happening? We say, well, it's predicted, it's prophecy. Yeah, but why? You know, why does it have to be that way? Because people. Mm -hmm. uh, to 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 get towards the end of this, let's talk about what Jesus' answer was to his disciples when they asked him when the end times would take place. Remember that conversation? Mm -hmm. yeah. And what Christ, what was his first warning to people? Let no Love man deceive. deceive you. Take heed lest any man deceive you. Mm -hmm. This is rampant today. There's so much deception today. But can a wise person be deceived? When I mean wise person, I'm not talking about wisdom of the world. I'm talking about wisdom of God. Can a person with the wisdom of God be deceived by what man is doing today in the world? Well, as long as he keeps that wisdom of God. That's right. Keeps God. Well, how do we know what to believe? Oh, well, God. I will end this from Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 25. Listen to this. Oh. Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 25. And it reads, 25. Destruction cometh. And they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet, but the law shall perish from the priest, and counsel from the ancients. And 27 says the king, or we could say ruler, or rulers, shall mourn. And the prince, those are also rulers like um, governors and mayors and that sort of thing, shall be clothed with desolation. And the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled. Why? I will do unto them after their way and according to their deserts will I judge them and they shall know that I am the Lord. So what basically is our Father telling us here? What has taken place, it could be easy enough to understand about the candlesticks of the churches of the end times. You know what candlesticks mm -hmm. is representation of in the end times? Wisdom in each church. Each church is supposed to have a certain amount of wisdom, godly wisdom. But what happens if that church or people of that church decide to 
make up their own rules to follow. The first thing that happens is that candlestick is removed. That light is removed. The wisdom is removed. But you still got people going to these things, right? Well, what are they going to hear? Well, they're going to hear, it turns out eventually, they're going to hear what they want to hear. They put up there what they want to follow, what they want to do, and how they want to do it, instead of what God wants, what God requires. And the first thing is undeniable love towards Him. That He be our first love. We put Him above all others. That doesn't mean we don't love our family or our kids or anything like that. It just means no one or no thing comes before God. Well, you want that in your life and you hunger for that in your life, you strive for that in your life, guess what? You're going to receive it. But if you want to turn from God and walk your own merry way and do things your own way, what are you going to have? Exactly what we have now. The following I will leave you with regarding 2023. Because we know what's happened in this past. I, well, before I go there, let me, let, me, let me ask you this. You don't need to answer. How have things gone for you this past year? Not compared compared to what the world's going through. Not that bad. Not too bad at all. Why is that, Ross? Without tooting your own horn. I was going to say, the why part, you're going to have to ask him. I, you ask God, I just know that's where it comes from. Well, you know why, because you're, you're doing, you're trying to do what's right. I, that doesn't mean you're perfect and you yeah, don't make mistakes. Say, I, I wasn't going to say that, but... Well, you know, what? the key factor in all of this is that we study God's Word for a reason. That's to take what we study and do it. Live it. Well, we try to keep God at the center of what we do as well. Yes, well, not, that's part of it. We're not asking Him what flavor ice cream to eat, but yeah. the important decisions in our life. How we respond to other people. You know, how we handle our daily business, our prayer time, you know, our study time. Does your day start with God and end with God? Yes, it does. There you go. It may only be a little blip of a moment, but it's still doesn't there. matter. <laughs> you realize how many people will not even was, not <laughs> even think about God. I was going to say, you know. Now, the crisis in Europe in this 2023. This isn't. A, I'm not a prophet, but I'm one that knows prophecy. And I believe Father has gifted me as he has gifted you all with godly wisdom. So it's not too difficult to figure this out. Yes. Doesn't prophet mean teacher, though? Yes. Mm -hmm. Depends on how you want to use it. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't like using the terminology prophet because world. of people's connotation yeah. of what a prophet is. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're saying you're like Moses and you're like mm -hmm. Abraham and you're like... No. No. Mm -hmm. No. No, not at all. Yeah. So, in this, this coming year, the crisis in Europe will continue until a strong man arises to bring kings, to bring those ten kings together. <coughs> Will this happen in 2023? Man, I'll tell you what, we're right on the brink of it. Right on the brink of it. Mm -hmm. Will it happen? I'm not saying it's definitely going to happen. But look to the east. Watch yeah. what's going on. It's something to consider. Because if you believe in numerology, if you add 2203 together, you get 7. Or 10. No. 2233? Two, 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 three. Three. Oh, zero, three. Yeah. Two, two, zero, three. You get seven. Spiritual completeness. Well, we are not to count the days, mm -hmm. but we are to watch. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are God's watchers. Yes. But as you watch, that doesn't mean you sit on your hands. 
you've got to tell somebody that if they are in a position where they are just la 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 la, you know, just out there and don't care less about anybody else or whatever, and they're behaving immorally, uh, unbiblically. Now, God's a judge, but we are to plant seeds of truth. If you see, if you see one of your children or a child that you're in control over doing something wrong, are you not going to correct that child? Well, any good parent would. Well, God is correcting this world right now. He's trying very hard to get their attention without making them love Him. You know what I mean by that? Mm-hmm. And what he's done, these people, you know, you got to understand, they're going to be praying until the cows come home and their prayers aren't even being heard. Because they don't love God. They just put it out there just just in case this goes through. You know, well, just, just in case. You know, um, just like that person that handed me $20 that day. Well, i got to give a little to make a little. Keep your money. You know. Also, 2023, I believe, watch for a geopolitical realignment in the next few years between Eastern and Western Europe. It's going to be a realignment. Mm -hmm. Because, after all, you've got to have these ten kings. Mm -hmm. Well, to have that come into alignment, you've got to have the ten kings. So it means right now we're not set up, that this world's not set up for that, but it's heading in that direction. Ten rulers. That doesn't mean there's going to be ten kings like uh, King Charles. Kings mean rulers of nations. Also, number three, in 2023, expect greater tensions in the Middle East between Israel and her neighbors. You say, well, duh. <laughs> well, a lot of people don't, they don't know what's going on there. They're not looking to the east. Nope. They're not trying to find out what's going on there. And guess what? The news media is happy to keep that quiet. They are. Because they don't want the truth out there. Israel thinks they're being blessed. From some of the things I've been reading. Well, Israel is blessed to a certain to degree. To a certain degree, yes. But when you're going out there and sacrificing animals, let me tell you mm -hmm. something. Before these red heifers ever showed up, and I don't know how many years this has been happening, two to three that I'm aware of mm -hmm. on Passover, mm -hmm. do you realize they've been sacrificing yep. lambs yep. on an altar in Israel? Yep. They put up a big old screen there, oh, and it looks like the temple of God. This huge screen that they made and put up. And it's in front of the uh, Wailing Wall and all that. Yep. And <coughs> they go up there and they televise this. I oh. saw it. They sacrifice a lamb. Oh, yeah. Now, what do you think? What do you think our father feels about that? Well, we're gonna we're gonna read that in just a moment. Hey, I think he already mentioned it. Uh, finally, number four. <coughs> expect more chaos, confusion, <coughs> division and disasters, hmm. man-made and natural. Why? Well, I'm going to read you why. <laughs> Very clear. Ezekiel chapter 8. Yep. Verses 17 and 18. Just two verses. Very clear. There's a lot more information on yep. this. Read all of Ezekiel. It would serve well, you well. Yeah. Verse 17 says, Then he, being our father, said unto me, this being Ezekiel, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? <laughs> Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? You say, well, that was Old Testament. That was the, They're still doing it today. They're still sacrificing today. For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Yep. This is the heathen practice. But this is also the practice of 
so-called priests of the day. And then finally it says, therefore, want to know how Father's going to deal with this? Therefore, will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare. Neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. He said, well, what kind of loving God is this? That's a very loving God. Because he will not allow this abominations to continue into the eternity. And he's going to get rid of all of it. And in the meantime, if you're, if you're jumping on this, you say, well, I don't do stuff like that. Well, I wasn't going to go there, but go back to verse 14. Right. Go back to verse 14. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And, the guys and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. You know what Tammuz is? Yeah. It's goddess of fertility. Easter. You know what Tammuz <coughs> has turned into today? Easter. Easter. Oh, no, that's not what we do. Yes, that's exactly what you do. Here's another one. Yep. One more. Uh, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. Yes. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple yes. of the Lord, and their faces toward the east. And they worship the sun toward the east. Oh, we don't do that today. Sunrise service. Every sunrise service you do it. Oh, that's not why I do that. That's why you think you do it. But what does God feel about it? See? What does God feel about these things? We can't even get Christmas right. <laughs> we can't even get what happened in Genesis right. Yeah. Unless you have godly wisdom. You tell somebody about the, the, the word apple isn't in the book of Genesis. Oh, yeah, it is. It's right there. Then find it. Find it. It's not there. Why? Because it didn't exist. It had nothing to do with an apple. See? And if you get the beginning wrong, what's going to happen with the rest of the book? If you can't understand the beginning, you can't understand the end. So, with all this being said, should we be worried? Well, be worried. only you can answer that question. I'd be concerned, very concerned. And it's best by learning Luke 3, 9, spoken by John the baptizer. And he says, And now also the axe is laid under the root of the trees. The trees are you and I. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Meaning what? You're not doing anything. You're not doing anything good according to God. You're just out for yourself. Take care of yourself. No, don't worry about anything. Well, our Father wants us to love other people, right? And care for people. Well, the big thing that we care about is that they're, they're being mistaught. They're, right now, as we speak in this world, so many people are being mistaught the truth from the same book we're reading from today. Why? Because just as it, as it was in, in, in Mark, be careful what happens you know, in the beginning, that, that you're going to be deceived. Be careful that you're not deceived. Well, you're going to be deceived if you put your faith and your trust in this world and the people that are teaching of it. We put on a pastor here yesterday or the day before, and it wasn't 30 seconds before he started talking about the rapture. Rapture this, rapture that, rapture. The word rapture isn't in the Bible, folks. And we're not going to get into that right now. But you know, those of you that know the truth, know there is no rapture. There's two tribulations. There's tribulation of the Antichrist and tribulation of Jesus Christ. And you need to know how to be prepared for both. So, staying out of the fire is your choice. But you've got to make the decision. I pray this coming year, if 
if you're having a life that's filled with chaos and disruption and agony and frustration and heartache and negative, 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 it's really one way and one way only to come out of it. Now it's accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and then doing what He says according to His Word. You say, you make it sound so simple. Folks, it is that simple. Now, it may be hard at first to get away from your cronies. You know, if you're, if you're all in that kind of realm of, 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 of negativity. Well, I lose all my friends. Those aren't friends, folks. They may be your friends for now. But let me tell you something. The day you turn to Jesus Christ, you see how quick those so-called friends leave you. Here's another thing, too. As much as they love Jesus Christ, they left him at the cross. <laughs> Except for one. They all went in their own separate ways, so to speak. They all congregated together, but different subject for a different time. Now, is this a warning? Absolutely. <laughs> warning for 2023. But do you need to be scared about it? No. If you do according to what our Father has given us to do. And when you make mistakes, you repent and you obey his commandments. And you do what it says. And you, and you help where God, I, I guarantee you, I'm, I'm sure everybody here knows this as a fact already. God will bring people by your path. Or you by their path. Excuse me, by their path. To touch the hearts and the minds of the children. I was watching The Chosen last night and night before. One thing I, I kind of cringed at where, remember the part where um, Jesus is picking, well, it's supposed to be picking the 70 going out two by two. But he appeared to just pick the 12 to go out two by two. But there was one comment, I can't remember what one of the disciples said to Jesus. I like the conversation they had about a well, how can we do this? You know, you're, you're sending us out and, you know, you're telling us not to take any money, don't take nothing, you know. <laughs> how are we going to eat? Where are we going to sleep? You know, I, you know, I can relate to that. I mean, they'd be worried about that, as anybody would, and, right. until they learn it. Right. But one thing one of the disciples said, says, you mean to tell me that you're giving me power to heal? And Jesus said, yes. And that's not what happened, you know. They can't heal anybody. It was the power of God through that they him. called upon through him. That's that what they gave him the power to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, um, but other than that, it's, it's a good show. Yeah. Um, it's a new episode tonight. Is there? Mm -hmm. uh, I think Every we're about, Sunday there's a new episode. I think we're about episode. two behind, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Every Sunday there's a new episode. But one thing for sure is... Mm -hmm. This is accurate. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This is this is this is what you go by. This is what you're going to be judged by. Now, I don't know about you. Maybe maybe I'm a different animal. But if I know someday I'm going to be judged by a certain matter, mm -hmm. I would like to know what that matter is. Oh, sure. Because if not. I could be judged accordingly. As we see here, people who turn from God are judged accordingly. You, you get to the right, point. Yeah. You get to the point with God, and I don't know what that line is with him. But God even has a line. And you cross that line, you're not going to hear from him. Why? Well, he's told us why. Because you reject him and all that he stands for. But, but I'm a good person. I do good things in life. I'm good to other people. See, they don't realize that God has to be the foundation. Well, all right, let's bring that out. A person who believes that they're a good person, according to who? Yeah, exactly. According to the world. Mm -hmm. According to what? The world. The world. Mm -hmm. Or according to them, yes. who are part of the world. Yeah. But maybe they aren't a good person in doing, yeah. doing good. Well, guess what? They're not the judge. If they're, here's the key. The word tells us that if a person lives without spot, the law isn't against them. There you go. 
How good are you? There's no there, if you can <laughs> if you can look at these commandments yeah. and say I ain't broken any of those. You know, I ain't broken none of them. Yeah. I I follow those to the letter. Well, you may follow them to the letter now. All right, let's take the Sabbath. I think I was breaking those by the time I could read. <laughs> let's take the Sabbath, just Sabbath alone. You know, are people following the Sabbath according to God? Well, most of them. Are. According to Murray, well, you Sabbath with God every day. Okay. Well, That's you good. should Sabbath meaning rest, yeah. but when Sabbath means that you are to put Him first and last that day. You are to dwell on him that day. You are to remember of his creation on that day. You are to remember all the blessings that are in your life on that day. And you are to remember what he has in store for you tomorrow on that day. And you put aside everything else. Your TV, your work, and everything. I still have to work. So am I breaking that commandment? Why not? You know, I ain't going to judge you. It says no servile, <laughs> servile work, right? Yeah, that don't, was, don't, let's not manipulate the word now. That was the you. law. Uh -huh. That wasn't the commandment. The law has not been done away with. No. The that only thing that's been done away that. with is the blood ordinances. I'm saying, though, oh. Christ said, if your ox falls in a ditch, are you going to leave it there on the Sabbath? Mm -hmm. no. The answer is no. no. So in other words... According to God, we're to do what's right mm -hmm. every day. Yes, but especially on the Sabbath. Yeah, I trust His judgment. <laughs> Put it this way: Are you being blessed? Yes. If you were not doing God's word, His way, would you be blessed? No. Probably not. As no, there's no probably with well, that. You wouldn't be. We just read here with oh, people yeah. that turned from God. I was just talking about Psalm 73 that you started with before. You know, when the priest said, why are all these people seemingly prosperous? Yes. So, that's why I say. Yeah. But the bottom line is, we don't have to worry about this stuff. No. What we need to worry about is that we stay focused. Because Satan and his cronies want to pull from us. First thing they pulled from us was what? Information. Mm -hmm. Truth. Mm -hmm. Proper information. It's the first thing that's been pulled from us. And then they us. add confusion. But, does that mean that we can't receive the information? You can if you want to dig for it. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? When you dig for it, it's a blessing. It's a blessing on your part mm -hmm. from God to gift you with that understanding. Because he knows you're just not going to sit back and just do nothing. Even if it's to the point of coming to the point of saying, Well, Lord, I can't do nothing about Israel, but I'm going to pray for them. Which we do. Yes. Wouldn't it be better, like Ross was saying, wouldn't it be better to say, Are you being blessed? And do you have peace? Because those that are blessed, quote unquote, of the world, yeah, they don't seem to, they have, don't seem to have peace. Yeah. Right. So wouldn't that addendum to... The blessing be, you know, needed? How about not just saying, are you blessed, but saying, are you at peace? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And that's, that's a, peace that would blessed. be a good uh, thing indicator. to do in 2023. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a good peace indicator. Where you know, your blessing Because you're right. Time. You know, a lot of people feel that what they're doing is correct mm -hmm. and, and will do it till the day they die unless somebody moves them. Yeah. Well, God is moving a people right now. Let me tell you something. He's moving right now. Mm -hmm. But are you listening? That's what it comes down to. And I don't care how long you follow traditions of men which make void the word of God. And I'm talking about in church settings. It just takes one step forward. And saying, Lord, I know what I've learned. I know how I've learned it. But Father, I want, I want your knowledge. Mm -hmm. I want... Your wisdom. I want to follow in your footsteps. I want to follow you. Let me tell you something. Things will change. Things will change. Well, that's all I have for about 2023. Does that mean anything's different than last year? No, not really. Now, we didn't talk about the natural disasters. I mean, they're so frequent now, it's, it's amazing. Big, big disasters. That's going to continue. 
It's not going to get better. <laughs> None of this is going to get better until Christ comes. Yeah. But you can get better. You can be at ground zero and then not affecting you. Because God takes care of his own. Ask me how I know this. <laughs> I speak from experience. I know what it's like to walk without him. And I know what it's like to walk with him. And I choose to walk with the Lord all of my days. You know, I was reading a, a thing about uh, a certain past, well-known pastor. I didn't know this, but uh, big TV evangelist, I guess you can call him. Mm -hmm. But he uh, got divorced. Recently? Uh, I don't want to say recently. I want to oh. say maybe two years ago. Oh, okay. That's pretty recent. Um, after 40, 40, 47 years of marriage. Well. And when it come, I won't give you the whole episode, but it came down to when asked why this this happened, yeah. the wife was upset with him for being too involved into the church. Ooh. So they you can't have two mistresses. You know, <laughs> and uh, well, two you know, two masters. <laughs> it takes two to tango. Yeah, I know. Because I don't know all the intricate. <laughs> yeah, but it turns out they eventually did get back together. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you have to be evenly yoked. I learned that. I was not on the same page as you were when you were beginning your ministry. And you were all in, and I was like, wait a minute, what about me? <laughs> you know, but eventually the Lord kind of kicked me in the tuchus. But I could have handled it. I could have handled If I was more we mature. Were we were learning. Right. right. I could have handled it better. Mm. But point being is, folks, is that we're, stuff's about to hit the fan in this world. Whether you're ready for it or not. You can be ready. You can be ready for all this to happen. But you've got to do it God's way. And God is very clear. You don't want you don't want to participate in His way. You're not going to have godly wisdom or knowledge. It's just not going to have it. You'll still have your your physical wisdom and knowledge of the world and how it works, basically. But you're not going to know the truth behind it. You're not you're not going to know how to rise above it all. You're not going to understand what's happening in the world either. So, just be prepared. And all I can say for this coming year is see that you choose wisely. And if you do it God's way, it will be wisely. All right, does anybody have anything that they'd like to bring up? What was covered or what's coming? All right, I would like to um, discuss, or not discuss, but I'd like now for us to participate and take the time of Holy Communion. Those of you on YouTube, if you don't have your ingredients, uh, just pause it and go get it and come back. Um, we'll be here. But um, this um, this Holy Communion, I waited to, I guess, what's called the first of the year, our year. Um, I thought it'd be a good time to get rid of some baggage. <laughs> I don't know about you. But as much as I want to do what's right, stay focused and do all those things, it seems like I fall short. Um, and I, I know what the reason is. The reason is is because I allow my flesh at that particular moment of time to override the spirit that dwells within me. And that's everybody. Nobody's nobody can get away from that. I, I guess. As, as long, long as we're still, in the flesh, as long as we're in the flesh, we're going to be doing this battle. But you can't cleanse yourself. Not you. It's not your power. It's the power of Jesus Christ. It's the power that the price that He paid on the cross for our sins. He didn't need to die for anything He did. But he died for what we are doing. And he knows. He came to this world and he knows. He was born of woman, innocent, without blemish, 
without spot and maintain that throughout his adulthood. But he knows and he, he experienced everything in life that needed to be experienced as far as how to do battle against evil. And he succeeded. And he shows us in his word just how to do that. But you got to be the one to do it. So at this time, I remember Jesus at what's called the Last Supper. We haven't done the uh, taking a moment. I will. Oh. <laughs> it was at his Last Supper that he had the the wine and the bread, but he also taught us. At that time and times after his uh, resurrection for us to ask for forgiveness Sorry. to to be able to cleanse us and make us whole we we can't do that we we're, we're not capable we're not worthy but he is worthy and by doing things properly by and through him we can be forgiven of all our sins. So take this time and pray to your Father, however you so choose, however long you need to. And I'm not telling you what to pray for. But I will say this, that you have an opportunity right now to be washed clean as snow. If you ask for forgiveness of all your sins. And He is the one that will forgive you. So take this time, commune with your Lord, and talk with him, because I can assure you right now, even through these airways, he's talking to you right now in your heart. So please join me at this time and pray to your Father. Lord took the bread and he broke it, gave thanks, he blessed it, he gave to his disciples. said this is my body this is my body that is broken for you a body that will cleanse you and make you whole he says take ye and eat ye all of it holy 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 Lord God Almighty we thank you father for the opportunity of today we thank you for your body, the living body that dwells with us right now, that makes us whole, that allows us to know and understand godly wisdom. May you send forth thy Holy Spirit to each and every one of us. We thank you, Father, for your body and for what you have brought forward to us. In Yahshua's name, amen. And the Lord took the cup, he gave thanks, and he blessed it. 
he gave to his disciples. And the Lord said, this is the cup of the New Testament. The New Testament is for each and every one of us that we can now participate in the blood of Jesus. Because it is the blood that is shed that cleanses and makes us whole. Jesus, to go into the Holy of Holies upon his death and resurrection, had to be the blood to go into the Holy of Holies. And he was that sacrifice for one and all time. That is why we no longer have to sacrifice. Our sacrifice today is of the heart. We sacrifice our time, our love, our companionship, and we give it all to him. And he says, take ye and drink ye all of it. Holy, 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 blessed art thou God, the creator of all. All good things, Father, belong to you. We thank you for now cleansing us and making us whole, allowing us to receive the eternal kingdom that you have provided for your children. May we this coming year be your workmen, to go out and do the work that needs to be done so deeply in this world today. We know that the majority of the world will not accept you. But Father, one soul is important to you. And I pray this coming year that we will be found worthy to lead God and direct a soul or souls to you so that they too can receive the fullness of thy kingdom. I thank you for this church and all who attend, whether it be here, or whether it be on YouTube or Facebook, wherever it is, Father, that they will continue to study thy word and reap the rewards of doing what is right. I pray for everyone here today and their families and all those on YouTube and their families that you watch over us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. And forevermore we will give you all glory, honor, and praise. Now, Father, I ask for a blessing over our foodstuffs that we brought to, to together today to spend time in fellowship. We ask for thy blessing. In Yeshua's precious holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory.